All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil, and today we're going to be looking at the new change that came through for the new player experience. CG released this last night. I want to break down what this is, why it's so important, and honestly, the impact that I think it will have not only to the players who are in that new player area, right, and we'll talk about what that is, but also I think the way that it's going to, I think it's the catalyst for future changes coming as well for people in the later stages of the game. So please hit that subscribe button, like this video, comment down below. Let's give a massive shout out to the channel members for their continued support. I really appreciate you guys putting up with me. You all are fantastic. And I hope that, you know, while you're not getting as much content, I know a lot of you have been using the Discord to ask the questions that you need answered by yours truly. So thank you again so much. Let's get into our video introduction, and then we're gonna talk about the change. All right, so we're going to actually flip over to the uh, forums here. We're going to move my fat face out of the way. And so uh, Meathead went ahead and he was like, hey, we are thrilled to announce a major overhaul to the new player experience. And what does this mean? And he said, you know, we thought that getting to level 85 was just taking too damn long. Frankly, the journey to 85 wasn't the experience we wanted players to have. We wanted it to be bigger, better, stronger and faster. I think this is a really good sign for Galaxy of Heroes when the, the new player experience has been brutal for a long time. And a lot of us content creators, when we have done it, it's just like this, you know, it's this monotonous like, oh, another day, another doing this while just waiting around to be level 85. Like, this is really, really good. Um, so while they don't go into a crazy amount of stuff, what they do say is that um, they sped up the time that it takes to go from 1 to 85. You wanted to have more ships available when you unlock Fleet Arena. And that players have a more complete competitive team to play with when they reach level 85 and unlock GAC. I think this is great. There's a lot of... That's, it's really, really good. Because you could clearly see that when you first got to level 85, you did not have the GAC teams. Um, if, you're, if you just started playing and you're less than 85, what's going to happen? Uh, if you're less than 85 when this goes live, they will be granting you all the characters, credits, ability materials, and ships that people will be earning through this new journey. If you just hit level 85, what's going to happen? If you hit level 85 on or after May 22nd um, to the day of the new player experience release, they will be granting you the rewards just at a later time because it's a different data pool. So that's really, really good. Now, I get it. It sucks if it was May 21st for you, but they had to draw a line in the sand. And I think going back to that point is they didn't have to, right? They could just say, oh, don't be level 85 by the time you hit this and it happens. Like, I think going back to that time is really good. Uh, thumbs up to CG. I think this is, you know, really great. And so they kind of show how if you complete all the events and quests on your way to level 85, what you're going to get. So the original stuff had already been updated from previous iterations but now they added in the phoenix squadron including including captain rex which is huge right that is massive bosk cad bane grief mando ig88 boba dengar executor requirements right there royal garb fine okay phasma finn i mean cooking but jedi Knight, anakin starfighter tie advanced slave one imperial like this is huge. This is one of the, I, I'd argue this is one of the best changes they've ever done. They're giving out a ton of stuff. I think they really took a look at a lot of the farming guides that we have out there where we say, hey, build Phoenix and build to Executor. And they're kind of giving you a big head start into that farm. So I think that's a great sign for the player base. And I think like they did not have to include Captain Rex in this, but I think they probably, I know when I was playing and I'm sure other content creators have said the same thing. Captain Rex is an integral part to your Phoenix team early. He elevates that team to a level that they can be competitive for a very long time in Grand Arena. So really, really good here. I think this is an unbelievably amazing change. And I think it will have really, really good effects for a long time, right? It's going to make that early game experience better. It's going to get players into Grand Arena Conquest and higher levels of territory battles earlier which is exactly what capital games wants right one of the biggest things that is a drawback to these hero collector type games and we're gonna flip back over to the game now 
And we're gonna move my fat face back down. Oops, whoa, whoa. There we go. Gonna move the fat face back down. There we go. All right, so one of the biggest problems with games like this is the time. If you've been playing this game since launch, the amount of just natural rewards you've accumulated because you've played for all of those years is crazy that they can give accelerated characters and drop rates and other things but just the time you've invested into this game is you can't put a price tag on it and i think it's the same thing for people who've played for six years versus three years you know two years to you know a couple of months that there's just this element that time plays to games like this that is really hard to put updates out there to necessarily catch you up and so i think this change of giving you these things is going to be the catalyst for all right, now that this is here, what's the next thing we can do to help players progress along? Because what I think they're really trying to do, as always, is get you to be able to work on the new stuff. They don't want you to spend the first six months of your Swago life farming Phoenix and Imperial Troopers and, you know, bounty hunters and stuff. Like, they want you to, hey, start actually feel like you're making progress towards Executor. Start working towards, you know, maybe this means that they're going to be like, hey, we want you to work on raid teams sooner. You know, there's there's a lot of things that I think this could lead to. So I do believe this change, not only great for the free-to-play community who's just starting, but I think it's a sign of future changes to come where they will hopefully continue to improve player experience below some of those top levels of the game now this does bring me to something that i was thinking about one area that does concern me is gac so one of the biggest problems with gac is carbonite carbonite is just this like terrible terrible division of players and a big problem is like if you just continue like i could end up in carbonite just by losing right if i just decide i'm gonna keep losing I could end up in carbonite which is absurd so the one thing i would say with this change is they're probably going to need to look at a way to put all the players who are going to benefit from this experience into the same kyber bracket for or into the same in the same carbonite bracket for a little bit almost the way that marvel strike force they have a game mode called blitz and um you know you basically compete against everybody in the game from the the highest, the highest account all the way down to the lowest and there's different reward brackets similar to GAC, but um, you're not locked into like in Blitz, you're not locked into Kyber or Erodium or Chromium. Just the amount of points you can earn increases the more the larger your account is, obviously. Um, but there's for the first like month of playing, there's what they call noob Blitz, where you're inside of Blitz with other players who just started. And I think that would be a really good thing to do for Grand Arena is don't let guys like, you know, and I'm going to, I got to find some of these because I know they exist in here. Let's see. Where are you at? S somebody find me somebody with, you know, stupid amount of GP. I know you exist in here. Most of these guys belong in Carbonite. That's fine. That's fine. Come on. Find me somebody. Let's go. Show me someone who doesn't belong. Ah, um, but yeah, like there are players in Carbonite who just do not belong, right? There are players in Carbonite who I think like it's just, you know, right? You know, like that's fine. Um, There, 5 million. This is perfect, right? There we go. Finally, a 5 million Galactic Power. This guy should not be in Carbonite. The minute that you hit level 85, you're not beating an account that looks like this, right? Like you just, there's no way you're beating an account that looks like that. You don't have, I mean, and I've got some serious questions to ask about this account. Um... But, like, you won't beat this because it's, there's just so much. Like, you won't be able to beat some of these teams because you won't have the gear levels to do it. So, I think that moving, you know, like, you get into Carbonite 2 and you're, you're up against this guy. Like, what are you supposed to do? It's a terrible experience. So, I think kind of creating a noob Carbonite level could be really good for some of the, for a little bit. Like, two or three Grand Arena seasons where you can just compete against players who just finished, you know, who just reached into that level. I think that'd be really good. So, that is one aspect to this change i am a little bit nervous about is you're kind of pushing players right into gac and potentially going up against accounts that they're just not going to be at all prepared for the only other thing i would say as well is that now you're going to be increasing the amount of like you think about it like this i'm um, trying to find like you're increasing the amount of characters somebody's going to have now they said oh you're going to get ships you know ability materials and all the rest of that stuff but 
they're going to be growing rapidly and then you're going to hit level 85 and that growth could potentially taper off a little bit but you're going to have all these things that need stuff so i think there should be some additional changes to move forward once they kind of see what the impact that this has um we've already got the core gear change shard you know drops like all that has been really good they've even started moving some characters to the galactic war store so i hope this trend continues right i do hope that this continues i do hope that they try to look for some of these characters that are i would say the one the one caveat here would be i hope it's characters that are a little bit more integral to the game you know like they've moved night sister spirit and zombie and acolyte all right but like can we can we move some like general veers would be a great one that'd be a great character to kind of throw into this store like you know move stark to a cantina store kind of move out some of these characters that we like to grab that are not necessarily the most important characters in the game but ones that a lot of people do invest their time into those are the kind of ones that i think we start updating here giving them the opportunity to farm gear farm chirotech you know because again the other thing just to you know think about as well is all the signal data that they're going to need so i'll be very curious to see what some of those other changes could be but i think this is just the start of future things to come so let me know your thoughts again i love you all may the force be with you and i'll see you in the next video cheers my friends